So, uh, I, this is a follow-up vlog to that video of the, the house, and uh, I just want to talk about closure, moving on, letting go, because that was a big thing to let go. There was a lot of drama around that house uh, after my dad died. Um, so, there's a few things that was going on. You got COVID just starting out. This is March 2020. My father dies. And the whole quiet family dynamics that were on hold were suddenly thrust upon each other. And at first, I think everybody was trying to play nice, but there are some issues. Like probably the day of or right after, there are still some some issues the day of. Or actually, no, after. But I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about this house. Um, and... Uh, this is sort of like a debriefing for me. So, you know, we got rid of a lot of things. Uh, my mom and her daughter, you know, came up earlier. They, they couldn't bring everything. They was just trying to bring incentives. And it was like, kind of like, oh, yeah, well, come around and get around to it. Get the rest or something like that. Um, I, was up here, I was already up here because I couldn't miss time for work. I actually took time off of work. Um, and they still compensated me for it which is nice, but I have a, a limitation of that. Schools were shut down, so, and they both were teachers in the school field, so they had a little bit of room to work with. Uh, fast forward to last weekend, actually. Last weekend, uh, I get up there, I get to the house. Um, uh, you know, I, I saw there was a window opportunity. I had my buddy go and check out the house. He checked out the house. I saw stickers on there. There's one of those lock boxes on the front door, but the side door was still normal. So that was still access there. Same key from two years ago. It could still get you into the house. And inside the house, there are a lot of things. There are a lot of tools left behind. The basement is full of full of stuff. Some, some you could say is still good. Some is bad. But that's sort of just kind of like how life is, you know. Uh, when you're dealing with that there are a lot of things in there on the ground and that's been held too long to longer than they should have um there is definitely hoarding going on and i do see how i probably picked that up on that a little bit because there's just a lot of papers a lot of documents from like 1980 1990 what is it doing there and because it's a it's a michigan basement um water would tend to seep in like well, my dad tried to do repairs to, to alleviate that problem however water still seeped in you got a floor drain that's plugged up and that's having issues so there are a lot of issues and oh yeah the power's out and the air has been sitting there stale so as i was in there i was just getting sick every time i come up in there uh I haven't had asthma issues in a while because I was running and I have been running like I should. But that's one of the things that made my asthma great was that I was running three miles three times a week. That was like that was like the pill. That was the pill to help me do that. So um I healed. Um but I was sick for a while. It was it was tough because the effect would stay with you. After you've been at the house, the effects would stay with you. I feel like I'm still dealing with the effects now. But that's how things are, is that when you're holding on to things for too long, uh, thoughts, memories, bad programming, maybe the lack of programming, maybe not knowing how to have your boundaries, because, you know, in that house, there wasn't really much boundaries. Where was the boundaries for saying, okay, it's time to get rid of this? And when you're blessed with space like that, it's easy to keep a lot of stuff. And right now, I have a lot of stuff where I live at. And now I have to actively say, all right, yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. When I leave this house, I will not be able to take a lot of this stuff with me. It may not fit. So I really got to downsize a lot of things. And that's going to be hard, but it needs to be done. And if I don't notice how things turn out from my parents' house, then I didn't learn my lesson. So that's very important that I do that. That I purge and clean out things and clear out and throw out and get rid of stuff. There's like a lot of stuff to get rid of. And that's like the only way you would get the more space. I do know that the more open space you have, the kind of more free and relaxed you are. And, uh, which is really...
really good. But yeah, it just shows you that when you hold on to things for too long, and you leave things unchecked, um, they decay. Things decay, even 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 objects. They decay. They they go bad on you. They they mold up. Moisture gets in. Dust gets in. You know, and there are a lot of things in our minds that prior having are in decay right now or just in our lives or some relationships that are in decay that we hold on to because we just always had it and that's just how it was but you don't have to do that so you know going up there to get a few things is you know that I probably will get rid of was good and I was able to get like a final look and final run through and say okay this is valuable I could probably flip this I could probably sell that I could probably do something with this that's not going like there were a lot of toys for like from my childhood and I remembered them I was like I remember that toy I remember that toy. I remember oh god yeah I remember that and what I'm gonna do take it with me here and then sort them out and then throw them out or just look at them and say ah oh, throw them out I could have did that there but I didn't have time for that lots of toys the pictures I did save pictures can be scanned and preserved and my dad had a lot of pictures that were left behind I got, I got them a lot of family history, memory, pictures that I want to have scanned. I'm probably going to have them professionally scanned because it's going to be too much work for me to do. So I will delegate that task to another company. And thankfully, I believe that there should be funds there to do that. It's not a very expensive thing. And, uh, you know, that way I can share with friends and family. And, you know, it'll be something there that's in prosperity after I'm gone because now I know what death looks like in real life when father passes you're like oh wow and I was talking to a friend of mine about how I wish my dad had journaled and wrote down his thoughts now, now my dad did take notes but they were business notes they were measurements maybe that was his form of journaling maybe that was his form of thinking uh, he always wrote in the uh, contractor's font like that was his lifestyle like he always wrote in that way that you write for for drafting that was his that was his thing because he was, you know, he he got into that engineering and, and learned how to write the engineering style, and so he writes like that as a lifestyle. Like every note is like that. So I thought that's pretty cool, but just just to know how he felt, you know, how he felt in writing. Like he would talk about how he feel, but I have a feeling like he held he he held on to a lot of stuff and hit a lot of stuff. But, uh, yeah, so now that I've gotten what I've gotten out the house, you know, I got me a U-Haul, uh, stayed the night too nice. I was like, dang, I could have went on vacation with that buddy, but now I know how to do it. I know what things cost a little bit more. So now as I, I try to acquire extra money, instead of buying equipment like I always like to do, I can save up for a nice room and a nice plane ticket and just take off for a weekend for a change, which is something I've never really done before. And it works, except that I took Friday off. But if I can find like a Friday night flight to go somewhere, shoot, I'll be gone. I'm going to be all over this country and beyond. Because it's time. It's time. Uh, not, the whole not getting younger thing. If I could budget. Because a lot of time it's really a time and money thing. If I can budget and save, I'm going to work that. You know, I'm, I'm a, you know, I don't have too much weighing me down right now so why don't I do that do I feel like I let I wish I was doing this in my 30s but I'm going into my 40s starting this um, but I'm sort of a late bloomer on a lot of things um, I can remember back in high school our college graduation they were waiting on me because I had got caught in traffic I went to go buy some Avantix photo you get this is it so graduation day from high school I go to Myers ahead of time to get some cameras to take pictures because like, oh man, I want to take some pictures, right? And on the way there, I got caught in traffic. It was a bad traffic jam. A Ford 18 wheeler flipped over. 18 wheeler flipped over, blocking lanes of the highway. I was in the truck at the time. But what we started to do was that we started to drive down the side of this ramp. And once I got there, I was pedaled up, boom. And I was the last one to get there in line, and I was able to, to march in to the auditorium and do the graduation thing. I'll never forget that. You know, and that's sort of my 
that's sort of my thing. I'm a, I'm a late I'm a late bloomer. There's a lot of a lot of life things that I started late. Um, but I think I think because of that, I start with more wisdom and more foundation and more experience, and that way maybe it enables me to get that much out of it. You know, but yeah, I'm, I'm a late bloomer on a lot of things. Uh, I don't like being late, but uh, because life is short, late is better than never. And uh, I'll take that. So, yeah. So I did it my way. Got in, got out, got the stuff. Now I sort out. Now I try to flip and, you know, let it go and keep it moving. So with that being said get off of here but I just wanted to share my thoughts on that I want to journal this experience and I'm gonna do that once I get